thank you for joining me. Thank you for sitting down with me while I have my coffee on my coffee. Wait, Morbius, I have a cough, black coffee today. Do you have a coffee at all? I don't drink coffee. There are several people that don't drink coffee. I get that. Um, do you drink tea or hot chocolate then? Or you just uh, avoid caffeine? Oh, I drink, oh, I drink uh, soft, soft drinks, drinks. I drink tea. I drink uh, hot, hot chocolate, 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 chocolate milk, milk, things like that. that. Just not coffee for some reason. You, I've gamed with you and I've talked with you a few times. I know you're very much a fan of several different things. But you probably run into fans that either try and gatekeep people from being fans by insisting that people have to have certain amount of knowledge or have, or people that are just buttholes as the fans or people that are fans and bring in hate into the fandom. You you have run into that, right? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, it's many, many times. times. What, what I have, have discovered, discovered is, is that, that uh, the concept of toxic fans is kind of limiting. It's more like they're toxic people that just happen to be fans because their toxicity spills over into just about everything else they do as well. For example, For example, back in the, the days of early Dungeons & Dragons, you got the people that didn't want to take the time to teach somebody else how to play that had never played it before, even though you took the time to teach them how to play. These people tend to be jerks in just about everything they do. And it's not just the fans, it also extends to the corporate level. I remember back when 2nd edition Dungeons & Dragons came out, they were making a corporate push at TSR Hobbies at the time to be more profit-oriented. And they kept insisting that if you didn't play by all the rules and all the published books, and you weren't really playing real D&D. &D. Even though the first edition was all about if, you, if there's a rule you don't like, you don't have to use it. If there's a better way of doing it that you come up with, you know, homebrew rules or what we encourage. That didn't go over very well. The, the toxicity, toxicity is universal. Um. Most people I see that are toxic people and fans of things are people that want to insist that if you're not exactly like them, you can't be in the hobby. There's a sort of people I like to look straight and I say, well, since I'm not an asshole, I'm not going to be in your hobby. I'll be in my own hobby. You're not welcome. That's a personality trait of mine I'd like to point out. I'm not a real big thing into having to please other people. If you like what I'm doing and you want to participate, you're more than welcome. If you want to change what I'm doing, you know, you're going to run into a brick wall because I'm not changing my stuff. I personally, yeah. I personally believe that if you're a fan of something, it doesn't matter if you know every single detail of something or you're a casual fan. If you're a fan of something, you're a fan of something. There's no right or wrong way to be a fan of something as long as you're not an asshole. Would you agree with that? Very much so. You're not truly a hardcore fan unless you know every little nitpicking detail dating all the way back to the 1930s about a certain comic book or a movie franchise or whatever it is you're talking about at the time. Well, so what? Perhaps I've only recently discovered X-Men comics, and I like them. I haven't been a fan long enough to know every little details about the early days. Get off my case. You're just wanting to be a, a showboat case of one-upsmanship. That makes you an asshole. Whereas I'm just a fan looking to learn more about my hobby. Which is... That is one of the reasons why... I like interviewing people about things they enjoy talking about. You don't, and a lot of people seem to think they have to be an expert on something in order to enjoy talking about it. I don't quite understand that mindset. Well, it depends on what qualifies as an expert. Again, back to d and I've been playing D&D since the 1970s. I'm not technically an expert because I don't know all the intricacies and details of all the 2nd edition, 3rd edition, 3.5, 4th edition, and 5th edition rules, but I can tell you everything there is to know about my game and the way I run it. 
So does that qualify me as an expert? I guess I'm an expert on my game. As far as an expert on the industry standards, you need to talk to somebody who works in the industry for that. You think that makes you better than me? Well, that's your opinion and your opinion alone. There have been... You are willing to talk to me about things that you tangentially know that you're not... You know even less about than you do Dungeons and Dragons, like the... I, we're working on, and I'm working on the questions for a 007, the 007 game that you were playing a few times. So you're not an expert in that. You're not, you're not even that knowledgeable in that, but you're still willing to talk about it. Well, yeah, because we're friends. Casual conversation is a big part of being friends. The 007 role playing game that came out back in the 1980s, I think I played it, you know, just a handful of times. Never actually ran the game. But I'm always willing to offer my insight and my opinions. You'll notice I never claim to be an expert either. People, I find this could just be my experience. The people that actually claim to be experts on a f fan topic or something like that tend to be the s in the same group of people as the asshole fans. Well, well toxic, toxic people are toxic, toxic people. people. And you are correct. An asshole is an asshole, universally. There's a lot of things that uh, I've noticed, like in uh, the gaming shops, uh, you'll have the gatekeeper types that you referred to that uh, don't want somebody to play if they haven't been playing for so many years, or, you know, Dungeons and Dragons is not for girls, or whatever it is, you know. I wouldn't want to play with people like that to begin with. I'm looking for some cool people to hang out with. I know you've said a few times now and a few other times that you're an asshole to people that you're an asshole for. And I have to take your word for that because you've never been an asshole to me. So I've never actually seen you be an asshole. So I just have to take your word that you're actually an asshole. That's because you're one of the most soft-spoken, sweetest so-and-sos around. If you were a jerk, you would see me at my worst, yes. As I said previously, I don't play with assholes. So I'm playing a game with you means you're not an asshole. I think everyone in my gaming group is good people to game with. For the most part, I would have to agree with you. Being a decent person is not necessarily, what's the word I'm looking for? It doesn't mean that you're perfect. You might get on somebody's nerves, but you're not intentionally being a jerk is a good way of putting it, I suppose. But that's true in just about any relationship, isn't it? Speaking of, speaking of asshole fans, is it wrong that I listen to some YouTubers in certain fandoms. I'm not going to name what fandoms because that might give away who they are. But is it wrong that I listen to YouTubers that are assholes because they have they make, they make high quality videos? Yeah, I think I understand what you're saying. I don't, I don't think, think the two are connected. connected. Well, you're not going to sit down, down and have lunch with one of them? them. You know, they might have some insight or some information or something that's of value to you in their Warhammer-related content. Probably not in their political-related content, but, you know, it is what it is. I am friends with people that are also stamp collectors. It's not related in any way with, you know, Dungeons & Dragons or... Warhammer or anything like that, but, you know, they're not related. That's the whole point. Now, 
the But by watching the videos, YouTube gives them like it. If when people watch YouTube videos of bigger channels than mine, YouTube eventually gives gives them ad revenue. So that's me f giving money to people that have horrible views. I don't watch uh, videos that produce gaming content made by people that are vegans. I completely disagree with their worldview on how they should be eating and living their life. Doesn't mean that their gaming content is connected to that in any way. Although veganism is not in the same category with, you know, the, the fascist stuff. It's still unconnected. I view these people as simply being wrong as a, and incorrect as opposed to being, you know, evil. If they're out to get me and they're out causing other people harm, that's different. But just because they believe something, you know, they're incorrect. Why shouldn't they make money? Wherever they're employed at gives them a paycheck, too. Whether that's McDonald's or, you know, Home Depot or wherever. Well, my coffee's finished and my coffee break's about over. Thank you, Morbius, for agreeing to talk to me while I enjoyed this coffee break and I'll see you in the future. You have a nice day.